good morning, everybody. I uh, hope everybody's having a, a great holidays. Uh, just want to start by saying how excited I am, uh, how grateful I am for the opportunity Coach Beamer has given me, and our, our family's excited about uh, coming to Columbia and, uh, and just can't wait to get there and get started. David with the first one. Hey, Will, David Kloniger with the Charleston Post and Courier here. Uh, congrats on the gig. Uh, what made you choose South Carolina? What about uh, this place spoke to you as your next stop? Well, uh, you know, obviously uh, I, I knew Coach Beamer some, not not uh, a lot, but but the things I'd heard about Coach and, and, uh, and everything about Coach Beamer as far as a football coach and a person, I knew that was a great opportunity. And then, and then obviously uh, – you know, have an opportunity to get back with uh, with Mike, someone that I'd worked with for a long time. Uh, excited about that, uh, and then just you know, I understand the passion at South Carolina. Uh, Coach was talking about it earlier. Uh, I was I was there on the other sideline in 2012. Some of you guys may remember that when I, we were at Georgia, and, and uh, the the passion and excitement that that Saturday in that stadium was was unbelievable. Uh, probably the I've never experienced anything like it and just look forward to, to getting that back like, like it was in those years. And South Carolina, to me, always had tough physical teams and, and uh, want to be a part of bringing that back. Ben Briner. Uh, hi, Coach Friend. Uh, nice, nice to meet you and uh, congrats on uh, landing the gig. I, I wanted to ask, what is sort of your, your vision for an offensive line and your sort of philosophy in approaching building that unit? Well, I think number one, it, it, it obviously uh, you want to be a physical football team, uh, and and there's no matter what you do offensively, it starts your physicality starts with your group up front. Uh, so that we want to be physical, uh, we want to be a tough football team. Uh, we want our leadership to come from the offensive line. If the if your leadership's coming from the offensive line, you're probably going to be led the right way in a program. Uh, so uh, th those are the things, you know, obviously you can get into the size and the speed and the, all those things that everybody knows, but the intangibles, the, 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 the importance of doing things right, the importance of being physical, uh, those are the things that, that we want to be on the offensive line. Eric Boynton. Yeah, Coach Eric Boynton with the Spartanburg Herald Journal. Congratulations on the job. Uh, could you just give us a little insight into the kind of uh, – coach and the kind of man uh, you believe Mike Bobo to be and, and how much did Mike Bobo's presence as the top offensive coach on the staff have with your decision to go ahead and make the move to Columbia? Uh, well, you know, I, I think coach said it earlier that, that there's not a better play caller in the country than coach Bobo. Uh, coach does a great job in, in, in leading the offense, uh, does a great job in, in organizing the offense and, and, uh, um, you know, it's a, it, you know, I worked 11 years, I guess 11, 10 or 11 years with coach. I was coach's offensive coordinator at Colorado State. Um, so a lot of the same things that we believe in, the same philosophies, um, we, we hold those true. My, Mike's been a, uh, uh, he shaped my career as an offensive coach. And, and uh, so uh, to be able to get back with Mike and, and, and uh, is, is, is great and excited about that. But um, there's nobody better in the country than Mike Bobo. And um, and so uh, I'm excited about that. Mike Yuba. Well, Mike Yuba from Watch Fox Sports. We, we know the importance when it comes to the continuity in a report that an offensive line has. Would you say that's similar in terms of just the continuity with an offensive line coach in terms of having a guy like Bobo, as you mentioned, that you coach with at Georgia and Colorado State? Like how much can that help and benefit an offense for you guys? Well, there's no question, you know, familiar with what each other do and, and as far as uh, um, schematically and then and then term wise, all those things matter so much. And, uh, you know, it's one thing to, to, to start new and then have to learn a new offense and those type things. It's, it's, it's refreshing to be able to come in and and not only know uh, what you're what you're walking into and in, in, in the terminology and, and what's expected, but but also believe in it. I think those are. Those are, are, are uh, um, big time. Uh, that's awesome to be able to do. And 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 really with Coach, uh, you know, I left in 2018. I left to go to Tennessee. And 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 you know, when you when you've had somebody's been your offensive line coach or or he was my play caller for that long, it's a lot of, you know, uh, there's a I guess a comfort that that you always have. So it's good to get that back and, and excited about doing it. Hill McGranahan. 
Hey, Coach, this is Helm Granahan, uh, South Carolina 24-7 side. I was just curious how familiar you are with uh, some of the players uh, on the roster here at South Carolina, the offensive linemen. Uh, I'm sure there are a few guys that you got to know a little bit through the recruiting process, but how, how familiar are you got with all those uh, guys? Well, you know, obviously, you know, coming from within conference, you know, I watched these guys a lot as the year uh, this past year. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, it just turned out that, that we played teams after or whatever it may be. So there were a lot of a lot of times you're at, you know, we played uh, South Carolina the first game of the year, but but got to see their offense a lot throughout the course of the year on tape. Uh, know a handful of the guys through recruiting, uh, you know, um, you know, tried to tried to sign a couple of them while we were at Tennessee and 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 uh and and new guys throughout the recruiting process. So there's some familiarity with with the guys that 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 I'll be coaching now. And uh, you know, I thought um I, I think that's always a plus, kind of know a little bit of the background. Plus uh, you know, there's with Coach Bobo, he'd been with them a year and they've been under his system for a year. So those are those are all things that are that are pluses that we're looking forward to. But like with anything else, you're coming in, it's a fresh start. Uh, it's a new start for guys to, to be able to prove uh, um, what they can do and, and, and you know, and really sacrifice to get South Carolina back to where it needs to be. So it's, it, you know, really excited about that. And I think the kids will be too, uh, getting a fresh start and a, a new coach coming in here. And now it's time to go compete and, and, and see who the best guys are. Josh Kendall. Hey, Will. Um, you went through the Mike's first year at Colorado State as a first-time head coach. Can you talk about seeing him adapt to that role and what you think he and maybe you to some degree can do to help Shane make that same sort of transition? Uh, well, I think my dad was a high school coach, and and, uh, and I actually had, I heard Coach talk about it uh, – Eric talked about it earlier. Uh, you know, I, I got to coach one year with my dad and uh, I first started coaching and uh, and he told me uh, one time, he said, hey, listen, uh, you got a lot of good ideas, but the job of an assistant coach is to make the head coach's job easier, <laughs> not harder. Uh, but I, I think that's that's why you have assistant coaches. Uh, you know, there, there's a, there's jobs that, that Coach Beamer will put in for us to do and, and our job is to make his job easier. And uh and, and we have a job to do, and that's that's a big role for an assistant coach. Uh, but Coach Beamer's ready for it, and, and, and uh, you know, no different than anybody else. And Coach Bobo had his first year as a head coach. Uh, that's the role of assistants, to do what, what's uh, asked by the head coach and make the head coach's job easier. Thanks, Will. Ben Bryner. Uh, hey, Coach. I forgot to introduce myself before. Ben Bryner from the, the state newspaper. Um, I wanted to ask, you've obviously, you said, been uh, with Coach Bobo for, for more than a decade. How has his style and his scheme evolved and changed from the offense that you first worked with him in to now? Well, I think any time, one of the things that's made Coach Bobo successful is, is there's been different ways to, to attack the defense and, and different ways to be successful. He's done it with, with uh, a lot of different uh, – um, styles of attack, uh, you know, as, as an offensive coach, you sometimes you got to be able to play with the personnel you have. And, you know, if you go back and look at, at coach when we were at Georgia uh, and the same thing, we were at Colorado State, you know, some of the top quarterbacks in the, in the history of the Southeastern Conference have played uh, in, in this offense. And then also, uh, you know, we've had guys that have that have led the league or been in the top of the league in rushing. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways to attack. Um, and coach does a great job of the of the, uh, the the skill that he has and the personnel that he has, um, and a lot of that comes from from Mike is very balanced. Uh, um, you know, you guys have covered coach and, and know that that the key to coach is is, is balanced he is, and and when you're balanced and you have enough things as an offensive scheme, I think it allows you and your offense to to match your personnel and. Uh, so, uh, you know, coach has always been one that's been able to adapt, whether it be because of injuries or because of, of maybe less talent at certain spots and still be successful. And I think a lot of that comes from his overall system is able to do so many different things and stay balanced has allowed him to do that. Dick Cox. Hi, Coach. Dick Cox with Indy Sports and Cox Sports Broadcasting. What do you think is the most important first thing you need to do now as the offensive line coach at South Carolina? 
Well, I tell you, I like I like your room, Dick. Now, that's uh, that's pretty sporty there. Uh, I think the first thing you got to do is 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 obviously got to get in, you know with with the players that that are here and uh, and understand the sacrifices that are going to need to be made for us to be successful. Uh, you know, we're going to have to all invest, not only coaches, but players. And we got to win every day. Uh, every day is a new day. And, and, and uh, we got we got to make every day when we walk in that building, whether it's to work out or to, for agilities or, or winter workouts, whatever it may be, you got to put yourself in fourth and one and, and to try to improve and get better each day. And uh, to do that, to be successful, there has to be great sacrifices made and uh and there has to be an investment made, and uh, that that'll be the first thing that we'll do in, in our room. We'll, we'll approach it that way. Go back to Ben, uh, Co Coach. When you're looking at a recruit on the offensive line, what are you looking at? And and kind of a, a secondary question to that is: in your kind of career as an offensive line coach, how much has what you're looking for in linemen and what they're being asked to do evolved and changed? You know from the start of your career kind of to now with how offenses have changed? Well, I, I think always there, there's, there's a, there's a, obviously a size and a, and a speed, uh, uh, strength things that, that are pretty obvious that, you know, 30 years ago would, was probably the same thing and will be 30 years from now. Uh, but, but the intangibles that, that are so important, uh, the, the, the team oriented guys, the guys that will be able be willing to work. And, and, and again, like I use the word sacrifice and, and, and pay the price to be the best they can be. It's so important in the offensive line. I think there's no bigger position uh, than the offensive line as far as will, will a guy be able to adjust to the next level. I think when you go with your skill players, they go out and, and, you know, and, uh, uh, a, a skill wide receiver may may play against four guys through the course of the year that are going to be college football players. Whereas an offensive lineman, he may go the whole season to not play against one. Uh, so are they going to be able to make the adjustment? I mean, obviously there's things like size and, 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 and those things that can help you make that decision, but the intangibles, the, the, the toughness, the, uh, the want to, um, th those things are so important. And, uh, and so important for for a, a team is that there's an offensive line that's full of that 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 is more about the team than than so to speak themselves. So um, there's a lot of intangibles that go into play. Uh, um, intelligence, football, intelligence, football savvy. Those type of things are important. Uh, but basically, you know, probably there's no bigger bigger quality than than the kids that that want to improve and want to want to be great players. Eric Boynton. Yeah, Coach, since he's a guy that you've been around a lot in the past, I just want to get some insight from you on uh, the kind of guy Colin Hill is. All he's been all he got through. You're breaking up a little bit. Uh, Eric, I, you, I think you may have said something about Colin. I couldn't. Yeah, he's asking. Right, yeah, just want to get some, want to get some insight into uh, just Colin Hill and, and all he's been through just to get back and play football again. Uh, well, you know, just uh, you know, Colin was the guy that played for us. Went through it, had a lot of hard, hard times there with with some injury stuff at Colorado State, and and uh, you know played this year. I, I know I got to see Colin after the game when we played, and and just happy that he was able to get back on the field and play. And uh, great kid, uh, um, just uh, uh, really a uh, re really outstanding kid. Hill McGranahan, coach, I know. Coach Bobo obviously isn't the, the only guy uh, on staff down here who, who you're familiar with, uh, Tracy Rocker, obviously, and, and even Drew Hughes in personnel department standpoint. How much how much familiarity uh, with those guys do you think will, will kind of help you and, and this team moving forward into into 21? Well, I've worked with Tracy twice now. Uh, we, we were at, at Georgia together and at Tennessee. Uh, and, and Coach Beamer said, oh, there's, there's not a better uh, man or coach for the defensive line than Tracy Rocker. Uh, you know, he's an he's a outstanding uh, uh, um, football coach and an outstanding person. Uh, you know, I like to give him a hard time. I grew up, you know, when I was a young kid, I grew up uh, watching Rock play. That kind of ticks him off. But, uh, but what a great player he was. And then he's just as great as a coach and just excited to be back with, with Trace also. Uh, Drew did a great job at, at, at Tennessee for us, and I'm, uh, there, Drew does an outstanding job. So excited to be back with Drew, and and uh, and can't wait to get back to work.